In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take a 3D model uh, encoded in the X3D format, a box, a red box. Uh, let's just have a quick look at that. If we open it in a modern browser, e.g. Uh, Google Chrome, we get our red box and it's interactive, but it's not animated. Now, if I look at uh, another example where I've added a few extra lines of code now if we view this file, open this file in Chrome we get a bouncing box continuously animated, it's still interactive I can move it round and looking at some more examples moving the position of these sp spheres I've got some bouncing balls and by adding uh, slightly different tags I can get a spinning cube and spinning is nice for models that you make in whatever 3D package it's quite nice to have them spinning still interactive people know that they're 3D models because they're spinning and here's a slightly more complex example uh, again spinning again interactive Okay, now how do we do it? This was my starting point and here is the X3D um, encoding of a red box. Where did I get that from? Well, the X3D format is supported by the web3d.org consortium. But I got the code from this website, x 3 DOM or X Freedom, and they are a subset of the Web 3D Consortium. And if you go to the documentation there and getting started and scroll down, there is uh, the X 3D tag. Within that, you start a 3D scene. Within that, there is a 3D shape, and this is the geometry of the shape and this is the material for that shape and you can embed that in a web page here it is embedded in a web page provided you have this line which links to the x3 dom javascript library which makes it all work so what extra lines of code do we need to add to animate the cube there are four uh, lines of code there which I'm going to go through in a minute but there is also an extra tag, a transform opening and closing tag which encloses the shape tag and we have to give the transform uh, an ID, a defined ID so we use a DEF attribute and give it the name cube The time sensor tag is used to set the duration of the animation. The cycle interval equals 2 will make the animation play for 2 seconds. Again, you need a unique identifier for your time sensor. Uh, that is done with the DEF um, attribute and it's set to clock in this example, but you can set it to anything you like. The loop equals true will mean that the animation will loop uh, indefinitely. You can leave this out because it will default to true anyway. The position interpolator tag sets up keyframes for the animation and positions the shape at those keyframes. In this example there are three keyframes set up, one at the beginning, one halfway through the animation and one at the end and the values for uh, the position of the shape at the beginning is 0x, 0y, 0z then at halfway through the animation the position of the cube will be 0x, 3y, 0z and then finally at the end of the animation the position of the shape will be 0, 0, 0 again we have to give uh, the tag uh, a name so we use the DEF attribute again and we give it the name move things. We have to bind the position interpolator tag to the time sensor tag and we use a root tag to do this and there is the ID of the time sensor tag 
and we bind it to the ID of the position interpolator tag which we called move things and the from field fraction change to field set fraction for the example of the middle keyframe the fraction of the animation is 0.5 we set the duration of the time sensor to two seconds so that sh keyframe should occur after one second okay so we've bound the position interpolator to the time sensor but we haven't bound our position interpolator keyframes rule to any particular shape and we want to bind it to our cube so we need another root tag and here we are binding the ID of the position interpolator to the ID of our shape which we gave an ID of cube. I'm not going to open this example again in a web browser I'm going to open a slightly more complicated example and I will open that in Chrome and uh, if you look at the red sphere it's doing more or less what we just did with the red cube but if you look at the blue ball it is bouncing off four imaginary walls uh, and that requires more keyframes and so let's have a look at that listing there we see the two shapes they're both spheres but one is blue and the other is red as before we had to wrap around a transform tag and we had to give an ID and a meaningful ID would be red sphere and blue sphere the time sensor tag is uh, virtually the same as in the previous example except for I've set the duration to four seconds for the animation the first uh, position interpolator is for the to move the red ball so I've given it an idea of move red it's very similar to the previous uh, example with three keyframes one at the beginning one halfway through and one at the end I've slightly uh, extended the Y uh, movement in the Y direction from minus three to plus three and back to minus three um, you might wonder why the ball goes up and down uh, when the Z axis is usually the vertical axis I think when you're in the um, web page environment X and Y are used for horizontal and vertical and Z is used for depth for the movement of the blue ball I bounce it round the middle of four walls in, um, and to do that I need five keyframes and the first and last keyframes uh, go to the same position so the ball comes back to where it started from um, I've added a keyframe a quarter of the way through the animation and three quarters of the way through the animation and if you um, plot this out on a little graph you'll see it plots out a little square All that's left to do then is to bind the time sensor to the two position interpolator rules and to bind the shapes to the two interpolator rules. So if I um, highlight the name of the clock, you should see it bind, bound to both position interpolator names, move red and move blue so here's the first route binding it to the move red and here's the next route tag binding the clock to the move blue so that links the clock to the two position interpolators finally we have to bind the shapes the red sphere to the position interpolator animation rule and let's have a look where is the we use a root tag to bind them and here it is root uh, from node move red is the name of the position interpolator and there is the link to the red sphere which is the shape that will be animated 
and of course there's one for the blue there it is and that is the move blue, move blue position interpolator being bound to the blue sphere there are the blue and the red sphere looping their animations I'm going to stop the tutorial there call it part one uh, in part two I'll go over uh, making objects spin uh, we've looked at the position interpolator for spinning objects you need an orientation interpolator I'll go over that in part two I'll put all the files uh, that I've used created on my website freemovies.co.uk at the blender channel there thanks for watching